Hi there, this is Valentine and in this video we're gonna take a look at a completely new feature that has been added in Postman and it is the support for GraphQL. So if you're using GraphQL, you should definitely take a look at this video. Now, you're probably wondering what is GraphQL? Now, GraphQL is a query language for your API, most likely totally different from any API you have used in the past. There are different API styles out there. As it stands today, most APIs are RESTful, REST-based APIs. To put this in perspective, before REST, we used to work with APIs that were XML-based, like the SOAP APIs. In REST, each point, each address represents a resource. So for example, calling slash users slash username will give you all the information regarding the user with a specific username. Now, if you only want to have the name of that user, that's too bad because you will get a bunch of data which we don't need. Additionally, with REST, as everything is resource-based, most of the time you will need to send multiple requests to fetch different kind of data and then aggregate it. Now, while REST has mostly worked just fine, GraphQL tries a different approach, a query-based approach. This is what QL stands for query language and from one perspective it feels pretty similar to the way you talk to a database now, of course you won't be writing select star from database but it sort of a, has this query feeling inside it and the idea behind it is that you sort of build a query and you only need one trip to the api to get data that you need now what is important to remember is that GraphQL is not a tool or something. It is just the specifications and there are many competing tools out there. And I know I won't be able to explain GraphQL in just one video. So this is especially useful for you if you are already using GraphQL. And in this video, I wanted to show you how you can use GraphQL in Postman. Now, if you're not building an API that uses GraphQL or if you're not trying to work with one API, this will be less interesting for you. But anyway, keep watching and see, maybe you can learn something new. For this example, I'm going to use the GitHub API because it supports both versions. Now, you can use the REST in order to get data from GitHub or you can use GraphQL. I prepared here a simple request using REST. So I'm calling the endpoint slash users and then my username, my GitHub username. And I'm getting all this bunch of data. So for example, if I just want to have my name, I will have to get it from here. Now, this is not a big problem. This starts to get a problem when I need to aggregate multiple data. But this is just a very, very simple example to get you started. I managed to get this request working by calling this address and then under authorization, I'm providing a bureau token. And this is the token that I've gotten. This is a developer token. You'll find a resource attached to this video. Now let's try to do the similar request using GraphQL. Now on GitHub, there's a specific endpoint that is used in order to send this request. It's called api.github.com and then GraphQL. And in order to be able to send this request, you will have to send it as a post. So instead of get, you will select post. Now, as soon as you open this, you will be able to see that a new option is available. And that is GraphQL. In case you don't see it, it means that you have an older version of Postman and you should update in order to get it to run. Now, before I can do a query, I first need to figure out authentication. And for that, I'm gonna go here to authorization. I'm gonna select beer token and I'm gonna input a token that I have already gotten. Now what you can do next is to add a schema for this project because it will provide you a level of autocomplete and you will sort of easily write your queries. In order to define the schema, you first have to go to this new API tab, click on new API. I'm gonna call it GitHub. API and I will add a schema. I have already downloaded the schema for GitLab and I will simply import it from here. You will find it as a resource to this video. As soon as I have done that, 
I still need to select the schema, this is GraphQL, and save it. Now going back to the request, I will still not be able to see the schema here, so click this refresh button, and then I'll be able to use this. Now let's start writing our query. So I will do the following. This will be a new object. Let's say I want to go to user. And in the user, I will search for username. And the only fields that I'm interested in returning is name. And now you will be able to see the response and you will see that the only data that we have gotten back from this API is just the name that we have requested. And this is in contrast to what we previously had where we have all this bunch of data and we have no possibility of querying in this. This is a very, very simple example and I don't want to get into the ins and outs of GraphQL. I just wanted to show you how we can get a very simple example working. Now there is one more important feature you need to know when using GraphQL in Postman, and that is how can I use variables. Now you can go ahead and define a variable, for example, a username. And you can use it like this. But of course, this is not very nice because you're sort of a mixing the query with Postman stuff and if you want to reuse this query somewhere else um, yeah you will not get such a nice interface so what we could do is to define a GraphQL variable in this JSON format I'm gonna have the username here let's hard code it for the moment and let's add here query So what I have done here is I have defined this username variable as a string and now what I can do is to directly use this variable here. And you'll see it's still working. And here of course I have the possibility of using the postman variable. And this sort of a stays a bit cleaner together than we used to have it. Yeah, so that's about it. This is the first look at this completely new functionality in Postman, GraphQL, how you can use Postman to send GraphQL queries, to say it like that. And yeah, hopefully you found this tutorial helpful. And if you liked it, give this video a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. And yeah, hopefully see you next time at another tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.